Adam, how difficult was it to raise those funds in this environment? Well, look, I think we're fortunate to be serving a customer base uh, that's just critical to how our civilization runs. You know, we're serving national defense customers. We serve public safety. A number of our customers use our drones for critical infrastructure inspection. Um, so it's not to say that we're totally detached from the, the mainline economy, but this is core stuff that, that helps our civilization function. And, and there's some degree of, of independence. And, you know, I think we're at a moment in time now where these devices, these drones that started off looking like consumer choice have really proven to be critical tools to help all these industries run and, and function. Um, and it's also become equally clear that we can't be relying on drones that are, are calling home to, to China to, to take instructions. So there's a lot of themes in play that I think are really important, and, and this is something that we take seriously as a company, and I think that's part of the reason why we were able to do the fundraising, even in the face of a, of a challenging macroeconomic environment. It's, it's also not just the sum of money. I was looking at the investors backing you, and you, you basically have a split of strategic investors in relevant defense industries and then sort of classic venture capital names. Which are more important for you? Does it matter where the money comes from in terms of opening doors to new markets? Well, it definitely matters where the money comes from. Uh, and we're fortunate to have a, a great uh, group of investors uh, going back over the life of the company now. You know, in, in this funding round, we're especially excited to be adding Axon as, as one of our strategic investors. So Axon is a great partner of ours. They're a leader in the public safety technology space. Um, you know, they made tasers, they make body cameras, and we're partnering them now to bring drones and, and real-time aerial situational awareness into their product portfolio. So that's an example of a, a technical partnership, a go-to-market partnership, where we're already doing things to help our, our joint customers be successful, and, and we we're very excited to bring them on as an investor as part of this round. Um, we're also excited to have NVIDIA uh, reinvesting in the company. So yeah. NVIDIA has been a great partner of ours since the very beginning. Um, you know, we started working together in 2014 before the explosion of AI, computer vision, machine learning, uh, but their, their chips are at the core of our products and really help make our stuff possible. Going back to Axon as a strategic investor, some of them queried whether you, with the funding, start to expand the offering too. At the moment, of course, you offer the actual drones, the capability, but some are saying maybe you start to offer the client base the ways in which you then use the data that's gathered. Would you look down that direction? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So we're most focused on making it frictionless and automated to capture the data, get it up to the cloud, and then make it useful however we can for our customers. Um, and the way that, that people want to use the data varies quite a bit by industry. So in public safety, the integration with Axon and their evidence management system is great. You know, we're not going to build our own digital evidence management system and hooking in with a partner like Axon where they're aggregating uh, body camera data, data from other other sensors in the public safety space with drone data makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. In other customer bases that we serve, for example, energy utilities, what they really care about is extracting insights. They're looking for damage, you know, rust, cracks, things like this in their infrastructure. Um, and it's kind of a different technology landscape and a different partner landscape to enable things like that. So we're most focused on the capture and getting the data to the cloud and then working with the right set of partners to make the data useful for our customers. <laughs> And Adam, in large part, the way in which you've sort of discussed that you're almost able to move through this economic environment no matter what is because in large part, in the same way we're just talking about batteries being made or recycled here in the US, it's about making drones here in the US rather than depending on China. Where are you in terms of the technological divide between US-China drone making? Yeah, so it's... The his historical perspective on the drone industry is interesting. I mean, these things started off basically like radio control toys. And this is actually the, the world that I grew up in. I grew up flying radio controlled airplanes. I didn't start doing it because I thought it was going to be a career. But essentially what happened is the drone industry grew out of the RC helicopter industry. And that was a manufacturing base that, that came up in, in China. And so that's where drones started being built. And uh, Chinese companies still control a dominant share of the market. But I think we've reached a point in time where it's just not tenable uh, to be relying on these systems, especially for DOD customers, but even for public safety, for critical infrastructure operators. Um, and so that is certainly a, a major theme in play. But I think the other really important theme, and for us, I, you know, I think the one that's going to be more important over the long term, is the transition from manually flown drones to autonomous drones. So the, the sort of status quo state of play in the industry today is if you have an expert pilot who knows what they're doing, uh, flying the drone, you can do some useful stuff. And we see examples of the, yes. that value being proven everywhere. 
Uh, but the future of these things is automation. The drone should fly itself. It should live in the background collecting data whenever it's needed. Um, and you shouldn't need to have an expert pilot there flying it. And that's really what we're all about as a company. We bet very big on AI, uh, computer vision when we started, and we're seeing those bets pay off and really come to life with our customers now. So one of the products uh, that we announced at the end of last year is the dock and remote operation system, where rather than needing to have an, a pilot on flight to fly the on site to fly the drone, it lives in a charging base station. Uh, it can fly itself on demand. It can be commanded remotely over the internet. Uh, and this just totally changes the paradigm. So we see a future where every substation, every power plant, every police station, every construction site has a dock drone that's available uh, to respond to emergencies in real time or to just on a regular schedule collect the data. And I think that's the real opportunity in, in the industry. So the, the national security implications of drones certainly matter. Yes. Uh, but the biggest thing that we're leaning into is the, the automated future. Well, Adam, uh, you, know, you know, the opportunity w was born, I think it's fair to say, out of the war in Ukraine. That put a lot of spotlight on the use of drone technology. How big a chunk of your business is military? And looking forward, you know, are, are you kind of more dependent on military contracts than, than some of your other customers and their end markets? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. and It's a really important topic area for us. So again, the, the historical perspective here is kind of interesting. We started as basically a consumer focused company um, but at this point, DOD is a, a major part of our, our customer base. And I think that's thanks to some really forward-leaning folks within the U.S. military who realized that these civilian drone technology was essentially outpacing the traditional defense systems. You know, this, the, the drone that you can buy as a consumer or uh, as, as a private company that costs a few thousand dollars in most cases has more advanced capabilities, more usable, more accessible than the traditional military system that might cost a few hundred thousand dollars. And tragically, Ukraine has really put an exclamation point on this. You know, civilian drones have become strategically super relevant, and they've also highlighted the, the deadly implications in many cases of using drones that are calling home to China and aligned with, with Chinese foreign policy. So we've been a part of this for years now, and we're seeing those trends really come to a head in Ukraine.